Nation. So, that's all it took. The worst thing that anybody could say to you is that I am better than you. It has nothing to do with that, Sean. I know you didn't see this live, but I know you've heard. I know you got my voicemail, but if you want me to do this in front of the whole world, I will. It's got nothing to do with whether you're better than me or I'm better than you or anything like that. Sean, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of listening to it. Do you understand me? I am tired of listening to people like The Undertaker talk behind your back saying you couldn't get the job done. I am tired of people talking behind your back saying you're a failure. I am tired of people saying that on the way out you couldn't do it because you were never as good as you thought you were in the first place. That eats me up, Sean because I'm your best friend and I'm also the guy that believes with every fiber of his being that you are the greatest in-ring performer of all time. So it kills me. It pains me beyond measure to look at you as a loser. That's why I'm gonna do it, Sean. That's why I'm gonna finish it. I am gonna end the Undertaker. I am gonna end the streak. I am gonna end an era. I am gonna do what everybody runs their mouth saying you couldn't do. I'm gonna do it for me and just as much, buddy, I'm gonna do it for you. Well, thanks for that. I mean, here I was I thought we had a problem, but obviously we don't. Because like always, Triple H, in his nice suit, Triple H has got everything under control. Silly me. You know, last year, it hurt me. It hurt me more than you can possibly imagine to have to look you in the eyes and tell you you couldn't get it done. And then I sat down at WrestleMania, and I watched you go out there and completely dominate The Undertaker. I watched you go out there and show the world why you're the game, why you're the cerebral assassin. I watched you go out there and beat him with nearly an inch of his life. And then you lost. And I was right. This year, at WrestleMania, Hell in a Cell, I know who's going to win. And I'll be right again. I'm sorry, and the reason I know that is because I've been made the special referee. And you smell what the rock is cooking. WBCB presents Pro Wrestling Weekly. Tell me he didn't just say that. Call in with a question or comment at 215-949-3232 or 888-922-2149. The tower of power, too sweet to be sour, funky like a monkey, oh yeah. And now, here's your host of Pro Wrestling Weekly, Ferran Derry. It doesn't matter what your name is. Really? Yeah. Hell in a Cell just got a little more hellish. Hello, welcome to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB, online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you. A little more geeked up about WrestleMania with the thought of Shawn Michaels as the guest referee for The Undertaker and Triple H. Hell in a Cell. The streak against the game. What will happen? We'll get your thoughts on that. We'll take a look at the WrestleMania lineup. We've got a few more matches developed for Victory Road. And a lot of interesting news this week that I don't, I don't even know where to go with it other than to just throw it out there and cross my fingers and see what happens, uh, including a Hulk Hogan sex tape. We'll talk a little bit more about that this hour, as well as a, uh, a transgendered individual arrested from uh, allegedly stealing from a WWE bank account. All that and a whole bunch more this hour. It's uh, going to be a little crazy. We had a couple of uh, title changes 
from some comedic titles, which has kind of led me to, to wonder if you're using a championship as a comedy prop, is that title really necessary? I mean, we've seen that, well, both, both organizations, WWE and TNA, are guilty of it. In the case of WWE, Santino Morella beating Jack Swagger this past Monday on Raw to win the United States Championship. And that pretty much was just used to further the feud between the two general managers uh, of Raw and SmackDown, respectively, John Laurinaitis and uh, Teddy Long, who took over the other's show this week and uh, made things rather interesting. But yes, uh, Teddy Long on Raw... Uh, having Santino win the United States Championship. And uh, we all know that Santino is good for his comedy. I don't think he's going to get necessarily a serious push even with this belt because of how devalued it is. And speaking of devalued belts, the TNA Knockouts Tag Team titles. They had, the women's tag titles, I mean, you have to go back to the, to the glamour girls of the, uh, of the 80s as far as uh, prestige of, of women's tag team championship belts. And TNA, they, they brought it in. Impact brought it in a little bit ago. And, uh, well, it ha- you know, I couldn't, I, for a while, I couldn't even tell you who the Knockouts Tag Team Champions were. But we now have new champions in ODB and Eric Young. Yes, a, a women's title owned by a man. Never good when those things happen. So, again, I ask, if you're using a championship belt as a, as, as a comedy prop, is, is that title really necessary? They could probably do without that so we've got that also this hour we've got a rather interesting exchange between john cena and the rock and oh it'll definitely be interesting we've got that coming up we've got your calls we've got facebook feedback a jam-packed hour let's go ahead and get to the phones chime in a little early this week we've got ed from the northeast to look at the local scene as well we'll get that out of the way ed welcome to pro wrestling weekly good afternoon we have ccw tonight at Boyle's World's Gym with the 7.30 p.m. bell time. That's on the ball five. Okay, that was that was World uh, World Gym, you said? Yes. Okay, World Gym on the... Oh, yeah, okay, right by uh, right by Chickie and Pete's uh, there in the northeast. I know exactly where that is. And uh, that's right around 10,000 Ro- Roosevelt Boulevard for uh, those curious and looking to go to that CZW show tonight. I think that was right around... Uh, IRS building area. Uh, I was gonna say I'm trying to think. I mean, <laughs> it, uh, th- this kind of shows you how how uh, how old I am. It's uh, th- it's right around where Crazy Eddie's used to be. Remember that from about 20, 25 yeah, years yeah. ago. Our prices are insane. I, I know they've been out of business for quite a while, but that uh, I don't know. That immediately jumps out at me. I have a friend or two who lives around uh, that area, so I'm kind of familiar with it, but. Uh, that's uh, that's good to know. CZW tonight at the World Gym or World's Gym there up at uh, up in the Northeast. We got uh, WWE coming out in. Yeah, one week Sorry. from this Monday, we've got uh, we've got Raw here in Philly, and of course with all the developments between The Rock and The Undertaker, Shawn Michaels all going to be there. It looks to be a jam packed show on the uh, the road to WrestleMania. Certainly one uh, that you definitely don't want to miss, and of course and I'm I'm going to be missing it. W tickets now they're selling out quick. For the the, uh, the hardcore union. reunion, yes, yeah. going on at the uh, the Philadelphia Armory, Armory Guard. Uh, yeah, they're, going, they're going like hotcakes. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's coming up in a couple of months as well. Next month, the end of next month. Yeah, end of next. I know. So we're what about six, seven weeks away. It's amazing <laughs> how time flies. Bill, Bill Melody and I were just talking about that uh, right before we got on the air about time flying on a number of different things. And New York, New Jersey has WWE, WWE SmackDown with a 7 p.m. bell time on the March 20th. March 20th. Okay, that's the uh, the night after they're here in Philly. They make their way up to Newark, New Jersey for a uh, SmackDown taping. Again, big deal since they're, uh, well, we're on the road to WrestleMania. We're only, uh, goodness, three weeks and a day away. That's about it. <laughs> All right. Thanks uh, Thanks so much for the call. Always appreciate the look at the local scene. Ed, uh, kind of helping expand a little bit beyond WWE and TNA. We certainly appreciate it. Kind of uh, throwing other things out there. It's uh, certainly not a bad thing. Let's make our way a little bit west over to Chicago. Dan, what's going on? What's up, Ron? How you doing? Good. Long time no talk. What's on your mind? Yeah, pretty good. I was in the hospital last weekend with uh, bronchitis. I... It was stupid. I've been sick for the past month and don't put off going to the doctor. 
Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Don't think, ah, it'll clear up, I'll be fine, because yeah. that's usually when it's not fine. Yeah, it was not, it was not cool. I was actually going to call you guys last week from the hospital, but I'm like, no, nah, I better not. <laughs> Yeah, no, that that uh, I don't know. While it would be interesting, I don't, I don't. Yeah, no, you you got to focus on health first. I mean, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ted well, DiBiase will tell you that, but we'll get more into that a little bit later. Yeah, would would poor Holocaust? This guy cannot catch a break if his life depended on it. Yeah, I, I was wondering how long I'd hold it off, but they're, they're all right. I'll, I'll go ahead and bring that story out. Yes, uh, uh, a sex tape featuring Hulk Hogan is reportedly being shopped around. Uh, according to TMZ, they've uh, viewed a portion of the grainy footage, which features Hogan and an unidentified brunette woman. Uh, Hogan didn't immediately provide TMZ with a comment, but uh, his lawyer issued a statement. Terry Belay is appalled at the unauthorized release of a secretly filmed video. Uh, Hulk... Well, he he did call TMZ. Well, yeah, I no, know. no, I know Hogan initially okay. did, but I'm saying, yeah, okay. this is the lawyer, you know. Yeah, okay, of course, the you. lawyers have to give their statements first. Yeah, uh, to, um, yeah Hulk neither approved uh, of the filming nor the release of the same. It is clearly an outrageous invasion of privacy and breach of trust if it is genuine. Uh, gotta love the legal speak there. Uh, we will all take necessary steps to enforce both civil and criminal liability. Then, of course, Hogan, he was a little bit more candid than the lawyers were. He spoke about it on Wednesday, claiming that he doesn't know who the woman in the video is as he went on a, a four-month sex bender, as, as he calls it, after he and uh, his ex-wife Linda broke up. Hogan said, quote, during that time, I don't even remember people's names, much less girls. <laughs> Yeah, adult entertainment kingpin Stephen Hirsch of uh, Vivid Entertainment sent a letter to Hogan with the goal of changing his mind regarding the sex tape and uh, started making that started making headlines on Wednesday. TMZ reporting that uh, Hirsch wrote that he admires what Hogan has accomplished, touts the company's list of uh, celebrity adult entertainers, and believes that there would be a huge demand for the video. I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily going to work for me. Although. Uh, I mean, if, if you're forced to see one of them, either this with Hogan or One Night in China, I mean, that, that's talking about picking the lesser of two evils or the evil of two lessers, one or the other. <laughs> yeah, Oof. I don't know if I want to see that myself either. <laughs> and I think somewhere in northeast Philly, John is, is just foaming at the mouth as, as to what to say. I can just tell already. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. He's got some. Uh, I'll have to go to the Facebook page. There's probably already going to be like 15 different responses to that. Yeah. You Trending see worldwide. Thing. You see the other thing that I put on Facebook? Um, it was the weirdest thing. Hulk did a thing with Bumblefoot. He did a... Uh, I don't know if you know what Bumblefoot is. He yeah, did. I was a little confused by that. He's the lead guitarist from Guns N' Roses. Okay. The new, the new GNR. And it was really weird that he did a little thing, like a little, a little like old school promo kind of type feel. You know, they were, he was jamming and he was trying to do the blues with... Bumblefoot challenged him to do uh, a blues thing, and I'm like, wow, this is really horrible, and that's what I put on the thing, like the porn hog. <laughs> oh, yeah, Hogan has not had a good week. No, he hasn't. No. No, I mean, well... It Good in some senses, but not not good in others. Kind of get you know getting getting challenged on guitar by a by you know by the guitarist of Guns and Roses and uh, even attempting to look. I mean that's just I, I understand Hogan doesn't want to back down from a challenge, but come on. I mean you're, that was you're horrible. definitely <laughs> outplayed there. Oh yeah, that was that was, that was bad. But um, I would like to change my gears to WrestleMania. Go but for I, it. Um, the Shawn Michaels thing. Was it as impactful as the SummerSlam announcement when he, when Shawn Michaels said that he was going to be the special referee for Undertaker and Bret Hart? Oh, you're Michaels, going back to okay. You're going back to SummerSlam '97. Just to yes, it was not. That was impactful. This was just like okay, even though we did kind of see it coming anyway. But it was still like. Was it as shockful as it was in '97? Years well, after that, the the thing that kind of intrigued me more, and I, and I think they're going with this to in in kind of a all right, let's see where Sean's allegiance lies. But it almost sounded, I mean, based based on the promo, that, and I, I only gave you the, I should have given you the first snippet of it, but I mean, it, that was we already have a long. I had to cut down. Uh, Cena and The Rock from like 13 minutes to about six and a half. So, uh, so I mean, there was no way I'd be able to get all of that in and, and still get everything else going on with the show. But it sounded like we kind of heard the Sean from '97 
in that promo, which is something that we haven't heard. I mean, his voice was, uh, you know, it sounded like he had a little bit more of a spark to it. It was a little bit, you know, it wasn't as, uh, it, he didn't sound as, as grizzled veteran-ish as, it almost sounded like we had the DX Shawn Michaels back, the original DX Shawn Michaels, just for the sake of that promo. And I think it's going to be 19 and 1. Because right now, what we just haven't seen a face and face, face to face off yet with The Undertaker. But it's weird that he's saying, oh, buddy, I'm helping basically The Undertaker right now. He's, that's what he's saying. And I'm sure this week he's going to say, oh, I'm just, my buddy's going to beat you. You know what I mean? Or something to mm-hmm. that effect. Well, he's going to play both sides. And that that's kind of the point is. It's another factor. I mean, it's bad enough that you have Hell in a Cell, and and obviously there's history. Well, there's history between all three of these guys. I mean, the first ever Hell in a Cell match was between The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels going back to October of 97. Yes. So, with that in mind, where do you, can you see it where it's 19 and 1? Because this is obviously going to be, well, is it official that it's, this is going to be Undertaker's farewell? I don't know or if it's, no. it's 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 unofficially official, I guess, is the best way to say I mean, it's kind of one of those where we all know, I mean, considering that his last match was almost, we're closing in on a year ago since, yes. since last WrestleMania. I mean, obviously there's not a whole lot in the tank, and considering he'll wrestle a big match and then take a, a, a huge amount of time off, I mean, unless, what would be the point of coming back? I mean, 20 is such a round number. I mean, there's really no... I mean, what what incentive would he have to come back in 2013 right. to go potentially 21-0 and 0 right. at WrestleMania? I mean, and at that point, he'll be... I think he'll have just turned... Oh, goodness. He'll, he'll have just turned, what, 47, 40, 47 oh. or 48 years old? Really? Is that old? Wow. Well, yeah, he was born in 1965, so... Okay. Got it, got it. Uh, last year, going back to last year's match, I really think they made a mistake on that ending where I like the fact that they put him on the stretcher. I've been telling this to my wife and a you know, couple of buddies at work that when they put him on the stretcher last year, they should have had the lights go off and him disappear from the stretcher. You know what I mean? Like, well, I think they were trying to, and I, mean, I don't know if they were necessarily looking a year ahead when they when they did this, because that would require long-term planning that we really haven't seen in wrestling in a, a fairly large amount of time. Mm-hmm. But that, that I mean, what, what it looks like they were planning was to kind of show, okay, by having him carted off as opposed to... Well, yeah, they, they, they wanted to make it a little bit more real as opposed to, I guess, repeating or reenacting something like the 94 Royal Rumble where right, the right. lights went out and they had the whole, the, you know, the whole thing, the, the spirit of the Undertaker lives yeah. within the souls of all mankind, that whole deal, and then have, well, I think it was Marty Jannetty dresses him, but that, that floating up after yeah. the fact, and then next thing you know, he's gone for eight months, seven, eight months. Right, right, right. That's where I thought that they were going to go with that, but, you know... They made him look weak in some way, though, too. you got to admit that. They and made that, weak. I think, is what they're going for because it's showing the vulnerability to the further add doubt that he can go to 20-0 and 0 for this WrestleMania. Do you think he goes 20-0 and 0 and they beat the, beat the heck out of him? And both of them beat the heck out of him and that's how he disappears again? I don't know. I mean, obviously, I mean, they can go one of two ways with it. They can go with kind of like a last gasp type thing where he gets the win and, I mean, that's it. You know, they, they have the druids come out and maybe, you know, bring the casket out, that sort of deal. Yeah. Or they could go with a more triumphant kind of a, a, a hero's exit type deal. True. They can go a number of different ways with it. I mean, if they, if they want to, they could probably cart out Paul Bearer to get some sort of involvement. Oh, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see him ever again, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean, that's the thing. I mean, because a lot of people are presuming this last match, I mean, there are so many possibilities. Right, right, right. So many factors. I mean, the fact that it's Hell in a Cell, it's not like he'll necessarily get involved. But, I don't know, might we see the urn for the first time in over a decade? I mean, where, where did they put the towel? Huh? Where are they going to put this out? Because usually they have it hanging. Yeah, they're going to ha- have it hanging overhead, which is more than likely why we're not going to get a Money in the Bank match, because... Well, how are they going to hang it overhead when it's an outdoor stadium? 
Very good point. Hmm. They'll probably have some scaffolding. Yeah, probably. It's like weird. I mean, that's what I'm being anxious to see, like, where they're going to put it and everything. Yeah, I mean, although knowing them, they'll probably have some sort of a video package because they're really big now on oh, pay-per-views yeah, yeah, yeah. of, of showing a nice 20-minute video package. They may do yeah. that and then, you know, have, have the ring crew set up the cage, you know, the cell, just like they used to with the old steel cage matches. I mean, going all the way up to, you know, the mid to late 90s. And I, I wish there was that short, shorter cell, too. You know what I mean? Not that big, humongous cell that they have. I wish they'd go back to the original cell, which I'm sure they're not going to do. No, they're they're especially with this outdoor, and and that's something else. I mean, I guess I guess we'll have to see if we're close enough to get like a weather forecast. I mean, the possibility yeah. of, of wrestling in the rain that's yeah. a that's a whole other factor. I mean, especially like if they did in, in Orlando last that one year. That was horrible. Yeah, there's and and. <laughs> They're going to the well again and doing the same thing for WrestleMania next year. Why only they go to a colder area too. It's going to be cold. It, it, Cena's already talking about. I mean, he's loving the the even the slight prospect of having to oh. wrestle in snow or wrestle with snow falling. And I kind of want to see it. I don't know. I'm maybe, maybe I'm I'm borderline sadistic, but I kind of want to see it. <laughs> All right, man. I'll let you go. We'll talk next week. All right, thanks, Dan. I appreciate hey. it. Great call as always. Greatly appreciate it. Hey, well, we're going to take care of some business, come back. We'll get Ron on the other side. We're going to hear from John Cena and The Rock, and they are definitely pulling no punches, and it has a lot of people wondering, work, shoot, work, shoot. I don't care. It's just damn entertaining, and you're going to hear it on the other side. Let me give you the numbers, 215-949-3232, toll-free at 888-922-2149. If you're a little too shy to get live on the phones on the radio, I keep saying you can hardly do worse than I can. And I've been doing this gig for closing in on three years. Actually, we're a couple of weeks away from uh, the th third birthday, I guess, of uh, this Pro Wrestling Weekly with me at the helm. We'll get a little bit more into that next week. But uh, if, you, if you're if you a little hesitant, you can always get on the Facebook fan page, WBCB Pro Wrestling Weekly. Go ahead and like us. And it's... Well, you know, fair game. Uh, if you know, if if what you have to say is good enough, and I can you know get away with saying it over the air, I'll go ahead and read it over the airwaves. And uh, yeah, Bill Melody's chuckling, there, especially when it comes to John from the Northeast. You never know where he's going to go, especially with the topics that we've had today. I mean, I already talked about the Hulk Hogan sex tape, so you never know where it's going to go. But uh, that's that's kind of how this show is. You never know where it's going to go here on Pro Wrestling Weekly on fourteen ninety WBCB and online at wbcb fourteen ninety dot com.